So my dear, dear friend, Dr. Jeff is in Israel right now, and he is going to be talking to us about what's happening over there. I'm, I'm so excited to have you, Dr. Jeff. Oh, what a delight to be with you again, Nancy. It's good to see you. It, it's good to see you. Now tell me, I know you're with your wife, so how's Louise doing with all this? Oh, she, she is marvelous. You know, I so married up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> most, you know, most women is, uh, would have left me a long time ago, but she is just an amazing, godly woman, uh, courageous woman of faith. Uh, she she makes me look good. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So yeah. so now, you know, I got I actually subscribe. I mean, not actually, but I subscribe to your newsletter and it is just an amazing update on what you're doing all the time. So the last newsletter I got you were flying into Israel, but you were kind of not getting to your destination. You want to tell people what's what was going on when you were coming down? Oh, my goodness. Um, yes. Well, thank you for asking that. Yes, yes, of course. When we flew Al Al, it's, it's basically the only airline that, I mean, airlines are canceling uh, coming to Israel. But we, we had flown El Al, and what was fascinating is uh, coming in to Israel this time, usually they come from the north, you know, fly in uh, from the north, then they go to Ben uh, Gurion, they turn south. But this time, this time, uh, Nancy, the plane uh, circled around Jerusalem, and, I, and, and we're watching this on the little screen, you know, the flight pattern thing. And we flew around Jordan or uh, Jericho and we touched Jordan. And then we came around at Talana Ben Gurion. And I found out uh, about a day later why that was. Um, Israel has the ability, El Al has uh, uh, agreements and ability to, if necessary, because of all the rockets that are in the air. Uh, rockets from uh, the Houthis down in Yemen that tried to hit Ben Gurion. Uh, rockets were hitting very close to Ben Gurion from Hezbollah up in uh, Lebanon. And if there were rockets that were in the air, uh, Al Al could land uh, at an airport in Crete. They could land in Amman, Jordan. And they could land, obviously, at another Israeli airport in the area, but they could also land on certain highways in Israel. I mean, it's, it's a logistical, brilliant thing that, uh, that El Al has, uh, uh, has connected to. And so what our pilot was doing, because there were rockets in the air when we were coming in, and the uh, the... The pilots, and they're all former IDF, and the attendants are all former IDF. Uh, and you're very safe with El Al. It's a promotion for El Al, I guess, right now. <laughs> but uh, it is safe and uh, with them. And But they were just being sure and being very cautious. And the flight pattern reflected they could have landed in Crete, Amman, or on a highway, whatever would have been necessary. If, and God forbid, it never happens, but if a rocket were, uh, rockets were to uh, be aimed toward uh, the, uh, the airplane itself. But that's why, that's what happened. And it caught my attention. Uh, I don't know how many other people saw that or understood that, but that's what happened. So it's an amazing time mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Israel. And uh, allow they're they're just doing uh, every precaution necessary. So that's what that was about. Thank you for asking that, man. That was that seems like a hundred years ago now, but it was yeah. only, it was only two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so how much longer are you there for? Uh, we're there for uh, a couple of more days, and uh, we have fulfilled many of our uh, mission objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, provided over 10,000 meals for uh, children and Holocaust survivors. And we were down uh, on the border of Gaza. 
Mm -hmm. uh, where we feed 50 plus children there. And we were there and um, the good news, it was calm that day. Uh, rocket, there were no rockets in the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to be with the, the, the kids and to love on them mm -hmm. and to provide the means to, to basically uh, provide 6,000 meals for them. Mm -hmm. And then a, a couple of days after that, we were up in Haifa uh, providing 4,000 meals for 70 plus Holocaust survivors we feed. But what was interesting, Nancy, is while we were inside with an all, what a precious, precious time. Oh, man. These folks are in their 90s and early 100s. And, you know, Louise and our team that is in Haifa, these, it was principally ladies and a few gentlemen, and they so loved on us as we were trying to minister to them. And we swapped stories on, on uh, 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 about Israel, our children, grandchildren, about God, uh, about the situation as it is. And they just loved on us and we loved on them. Oh, it, it was so, so, so precious. But while we were inside with, with the survivors, uh, our driver was outside with the vehicle. And uh, what he saw and reported, and I have an app that tells me when rockets are coming into Israel, <laughs> what he saw were rockets from Lebanon being fired toward Haifa and and praise God for the Iron Dome, Israel's mm -hmm. defense system, mm -hmm. knocked out those rockets. And where those rockets, that day there were like 50 rockets launched into Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and those rockets that he saw being knocked out of the sky were headed toward Haifa where mm -hmm. we were. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord was watching over us, uh, but a thousand stories. But um, this this is what happened. Uh, just just a few of the just a couple of the yeah. stories. And the people in Israel, they're just the you know from what I understand, very humble people, oh, oh, good hearted. Oh. Like you can see their heart. Like is is it true? It is so true. Let me let me tell you. Oh, thank you. Great question. Yes, man. Listen, I got holy bumps if you see. Usually I have a suit coat on. I'm sorry for the t-shirt. It's Israel, okay? <laughs> and and uh, but listen, uh, we've talked with people, uh, just regular folks, but a lot of soldiers. Example, today uh, I talked with a 51-year-old uh, captain. And his son, he's, 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 uh, was in uniform. Uh, there is uh, an event that they were watching over in Jerusalem. And uh, in talking with him, uh, he was saying, just sharing how his son was fighting up in Lebanon. And he, his father, this 51-year-old father, was fighting in Gaza. But today in, in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, he was uh, part of this, and, and basically it's a uh, boot camp graduation for Israeli soldiers. And the event is at the Kotel, the, the, the Wailing Wall. And I said, you know, and I, I'm talking to him, his name uh, is Shay, S-H-A-Y. And I said, Shay, uh, you know, and first of all, I said, people in Texas love you. We pray for you. And we are so uh proud of you we respect you and he goes oh and he was he says oh you're embarrassing me i said no 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 we respect you he says listen he says my parents were holocaust survivors he says this is the least i can do i can this is the least i can do in honor of them and in honor of my country he says we fought he personally had fought in the first lebanese war and now he's in gaza and this and that. He says, that's the least I can do. He says, basically, we do what we got to do. And he wasn't puffed up. He was humble about it. He says, mm -hmm. I do this in honor of my parents who survived the Holocaust. I will defend and fight 
for Israel. That's oh, amazing. Fancy. Oh. That's yeah. ima- I'm getting I'm getting chills in my I'm get the holy bumps. Uh, it's yeah. just like holy. I mean, they, there must be so many people that you're meeting that are just yeah. their hearts are so like you know. Not only do they love what you're doing, you're feeding them, but but you're <clears throat> you're you're praying for them. You're you yes. you want to know about their lives and yes. and what they're going through. I mean, are they scared? Oh, a great another great question. Uh, we were with dear, dear friends uh, in in here in Jerusalem, and uh, he's a Saba, I'm a Saba, meaning we're grandparents, right? And uh, and he is a, a leader, a pastor of a messianic congregation here in Israel. It's all Jews who believe in Jesus, and and it's a three hour service. So I'm just saying to church people, it's a three hour service. <laughs> <laughs> so you got nothing, man, with three yeah. hour service. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, anyway, but then afterwards is a thing called Oneg. It's basically a potluck. And and we we stayed for four hours, five hours with him. We have known this precious couple. And by the way, his name is Yossi. Her, her name is Miriam. This is Joseph and Mary here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have known them for over 20 years. And we sat and we shared our hearts our stories, we wept, we laughed, and we were talking about in Hebrew, it's the uh, Hamatzav, the situation. And uh, he, he was talking, uh, both both of them, he and his wife, both Yossi and Miriam, they were talking about the PTSD that they are experiencing and their children who were all in the IDF. And the whole nation is struggling with PTSD. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they can't sleep at night, they have to leave the light on, or, or, or talk to a, a counselor, or whatever the need is. We're talking from grandparents down to children. The little children, which breaks your heart, uh, you talk with them, uh, even teenagers, down in Gaza on the border of Gaza in a town called Sderot. You talk with them, and they're sitting there talking to you, and they're and they're rocking. They don't even realize they're rocking back and forth, but they're talking with you and they're doing this. And these are teenagers. They live Mm. in a war zone and everybody knows of someone who has been killed or kidnapped or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But the whole nation, and they know they're alone. Now they know the United States, not to get political. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But I bet, I I bet they must, I bet they must be so excited about the news that's coming from America. I'm going to tell you some stories. (laughs) So, so now that's happening with them and they're trying to get through this because PTSD is, takes, it's a lifetime. That's what you don't, you don't forget that. That's like Holocaust uh, survivors. Yes. They will never forget what happened to them. And and they will yes. have stories that will last forever. But yes. I, I I mean, <clears throat> in the in the political scene here in the United States, I'm not going to lie. People are excited. They're they're, yeah. they're excited here. And not only are they excited here, I I can just imagine how they are excited in Israel because yes. we know that Trump and, and Netanyahu are buds, like in, yes. in a sense where they get each other. And, you know, he and Trump knows he's he wants to protect Israel. Yes. So, yes. Tell me what's happening now. Oh, man. OK, well, let's just start off with, uh, with this. Where we are staying, it's an inter- intersection of three roads and we saw a truck. No kidding, man. We saw a truck was a three days ago. Uh, with a big old Trump flag on the back of it, you know, really? in, in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. <laughs> and, and, but everybody that I've talked with, every Israeli, uh, from soldiers to uh, just folks on the street, they, well, they ask, you know, uh, you know where are you from? And, and in Hebrew, Ani uh, uh, made Texas. I'm from Texas. First of all, Israelis love Texas. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they <do>. Good. <laughs> say, did you vote for Trump? And we go, yes, we did. They said, yes, yes. You know, we are, <laughs> we are excited. And now, let's just even take it this 
this uh, afar, uh, the young people that, that we met, uh, the teenagers, the 20 somethings, and we said, they, told, they show me these videos on, on their phone of the people on the left who are upset of the outcome of the election and, you know, the crying, the professor saying there's going to be a safe space uh, if you're if you're upset that you know the way the vote went this time, and uh, and Israelis they can't for the life of them understand why there are some not all obviously they understand that but why some young people that are that are that are eighteen nineteen twenty years old are going to need a safe space in the university because they're upset at the political outcome mm -hmm. when 18, 19, 20 year olds in Israel are fighting wars. They don't understand the whininess. Is that a mm -hmm. word? The whining. Yeah. And, and uh, they don't get it, yeah. uh, but they laugh because they see the, the, the memes, the, those little short clips and mm -hmm. they said, look how, look at this. And uh, I said, well, Good news, not all Americans, not all young people are like that, just a handful. Mm -hmm. And they get all the attention. But the Israelis are so excited about Trump being president uh, because they know, as you know, as they, they understand the bull in the China closet, the crazy mm -hmm. bull. He speaks, he breaks things. But one thing they understand is that our enemies, Israel's enemies, fear Trump. Mm -hmm. This time in the global landscape that we all live in, mm -hmm. at least for America, we need strong leadership. Mm -hmm. and, and that two things uh, that our enemies respect, one is gray hair and strength. Now, I don't know what color President Trump's hair is, but mm -hmm. he, he has strength. And for sure. Our, and our enemies know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, this is the great thing is, is that America will now be taking a new shape. And, yes. um, you know, maybe the last four years that we've had were just the time where he was strengthening, seeing the political scene, seeing the nations and how things are developing. And, yes. you know, this is, you know, as a time such as this, right? for a time such as this that he is stepping in and bringing yes. some people with him that are going to change the the political landscape but yes. you know the whole the whole thing too is is that <clears throat> i mean i've been praying for idf i pray for them like as much as i can remember to pray for them and um i know that they 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 stand they're standing alone in israel and um and i i just i i want to know have you have, do you know what's happening with the hostages and IDF? Or are they getting closer to finding hostages there? Or no, listen. I pray, I pray that they find the hostages. I pray that they rescue the hostages. And of course, the recent news with Qatar, uh, they have stopped negotiation with Hamas and Israel about the hostages. Um, and uh, there, there are still people uh, marching, uh, you know, uh, uh, in in a very respectful way, not in a destructive way here in Israel, where the, it's a it's a march of solidarity. Uh, please bring the hostages home, and we've seen these uh, these uh, marches, these solidarity marches. We have been there in the marches of you know, praying for, and, you know, let's bring the hostages back. And I know families who have family members uh, that are uh, still hostage. I know uh, people, and uh, it's a heartbreak. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, uh, it's over a year now, and we all know that some of the hostages are not alive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a heartbreak uh, beyond measure. But everybody wants the hostages to be free. Everybody wants peace. Both Jewish and Arab people here mm -hmm. in Israel, they want peace. Uh, it's the radicals, the Muslim, uh, the Muslim Hamas radicals, uh, and uh, 
everybody knows that. And, you know, even with even with even with President Trump now being, it, it, you know, it looks like there's going to be a very interesting four years here in America and the world with change to remind your audience as believers in Yeshua, it is our responsibility, Romans 13, to pray for those in leadership, whether we voted for them or not, whatever side of the political issue people are on here that are watching this. If you're a believer in Jesus, it is our responsibility to pray. And I prayed for President Biden. I did. Mm -hmm. And 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 those on the left, because, you know, and I don't agree with, you know, what they were saying and doing. But as a believer, uh, I prayed for them. And it doesn't make me better. It took me a long time to get to that point. I'd rather criticize the left. And anyway, through a series of circumstances, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart. Anyway, I'm, I do pray for those who persecute us, those who disagree with us, those who are on the opposite end, uh, you know, the other side of things. And, and it's our responsibility to pray for them. And we have the privilege to vote them in, vote them out, mm -hmm. pray, vote, get them in, get them out, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I pray that the next four years will be a productive uh, of, of a series of good changes for not, for America, mm -hmm. obviously, and yes, for the rest of the world, and yes, for Israel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dr. Jeff, you know, when you think about it, and, and, and I'm so sorry for anybody in Israel that lost somebody or knows somebody that was taken on that October 7th. Yes. But I think that also, you know, I really in the bigger picture, if this did not happen and we we don't want it, we didn't want it to happen. OK, yes. if this didn't happen, how would they know about all those tunnels? How would they know about where they're hiding things? If if this didn't happen, how would have God, you know, been able to get them to smoke everything out? Oh, great question. It, you know, it, God is sovereign now as as believers. Some to, in, in the West, meaning the United States, there are many, many, many who believe, and based on one verse, they think Satan is running things. Okay. And if you read the book of Job, you find out that the evil one can only do what God allows him to do. He's on a leash. Satan is on a leash. God is sovereign. God is holy. God is in control. Uh, we may not understand what he's doing. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts, not our thoughts, and so on. But in God's sovereignty, all of prophecy, the focus of all prophecy is Israel. And we've talked about this before in the past. It's not the United States, though we're very much part of the global scene. And it's not Europe. It's not uh, uh, South America or Africa. It's the Middle East, uh, specifically Israel. And when you read the prophets, the Nevi'im, when you read the prophets, you read that certain events will take place in the latter days, latter years. And it's, uh, it's regarding Israel. There are some good things that will take place. There are some very difficult things that will take place. But when you look at it from that perspective, that God is in control, and you look at the scripture, what it says that will happen in the latter days, everything is moving according to God's will. We may not understand it. But what we do understand, even in our inability to comprehend God and why he's doing things this way and not that way, as believers, it is our responsibility, Jesus said, to watch and pray, to prepare ourselves, put oil in our lamps, you know, get ready, get ready. You see these things taking place. Yeshua said, look up. Your redemption is very near. So we know the we know the clock is ticking. And there are many reasons we don't have time in, in this segment to discuss all what how do we know this is the latter time and the latter years? And how do we know the clock is ticking? There are many good reasons that we know, but what we are responsible to do as believers is to be alert, uh live our faith in a very ungodly world, kind of like Noah, just, you know, 120 years, he was faithful, you got to do that thing. And and to look up and to watch 
and pray. Mm -hmm. Be the salt. Be the light. That is our responsibility. And yes, the mandate to Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. And again, I think we talked about this in the past. When you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that is praying for the peace of Jerusalem, we are praying thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Because there will be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes. And so we are praying, even so come Lord Jesus, when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Uh, you talk about holy bumps. And the Israelis, oh, and we, and, oh, listen, their hearts are open. Their hearts are open to, I mean, they are still surprised that we're here because there are no tourists here. I mean, you know, just a, maybe a little group there and a little group here. And they're still surprised that we're here. And their hearts, because we've been coming, this is my 49th time here. Wow. And we're anywhere from two weeks to two months at a time, mm -hmm. uh, feeding kids, families, Holocaust survivors. And we have a myriad of Israeli friends, both believers and non-believers. Yes, mm -hmm. we have non-believing friends here. And mm -hmm. we're in their homes. And, and we celebrate Shabbat with them and holy days with them. And we just love on them. Mm -hmm. and, and they ask us, why? Mm -hmm. Why? You're you're not like, you know, uh, you're you're different. Why do you keep coming back? Why? Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Then we share, and it's a it's it's profoundly simple, Nancy. Mm -hmm. It's profoundly mm -hmm. simple, and it works. And their hearts are open, and Israelis are coming to faith and saying, "Blessed are you, God." Blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. And isn't that what Jesus said? You, Israel, will not see me again until you begin to say that. And guess what? Oh, I, I don't know if you can see, I got holy bones. <laughs> are beginning to say, what are you? It was Yeshua all along. Mm -hmm. It was you, Lord. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so as you're there, I have to ask you, do you feel a strong presence of the Lord, you and oh, Louise? Always. Do you feel always. like he's walking with you always. there? Always. Do you feel always. his presence? Yes, yes, and yes. Listen, it, when we bring groups and individuals and pastors and such, first of all, you're never more alive. You're, you're, the spirituality is intense because you walk where Jesus walked. Walk, you walk where the prophets walk. I mean, these steps leading up to the house of Caiaphas, I mean, Jesus' feet touch those steps, and you're there, the, the Sea of Galilee, the whole thing. And, and you listen, I've had people who have come to me, who are, have come with me, and uh, in the middle of our time here, they'll say, my dreams are so vivid. Uh, sometimes their fears are overwhelming. Uh, anxiety but then sometimes the joy is overwhelming and so we talk about that and if you talk to believers here in the land uh they'll attest to the fact well they'll, they'll say well of, those in israelis of course <laughs> of course you're going it's more you're going to fill the ruach HaKodesh. you're going to fill the holy spirit of course and then they'll say where do you think yeshua is going to rule and reign for a thousand years. It's here in Jerusalem. Where do you think the greatest battle, spiritual battle is happening? Which means that spiritual awareness becomes alive. It's like a fire mm. in your soul. And, and forgive me, I know you cut me, I'm red, white, and blue. I love my country. When I'm in the States, you know what I think about? Israel. When I'm in Israel, do you know what I think about? Israel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't think about, the, you know, it's like, okay. But uh, yeah, my heart is here, has always been here. And, uh, you know, Ima Shali Yehudia, my mother was Jewish, you know, which it's in my blood, man. It's in yeah. my blood. And, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, wow. But yes, it, the, the spirituality is alive here mm -hmm. you feel it it's palpable mm -hmm. it's there you can touch it yeah 
And, and so with this, um, just so that everybody knows, you know, that Dr. Jeff and his wife are there feeding the poor through Israel Today Ministries and how, and if anybody out there wants to get his newsletter, which is quite amazing, um, and you get updates and everything what's going on in Israel, because he does put that there, you can go to Israel Today Ministries, is it .org or .com? .org. .org. And so um, to, just what would you like to leave the audience with today as we part ways? Oh, my. Thank you, Nancy. Just remember in this uh, crazy upside down world that we live in, uh, as we said moments ago, just be reminded that God is in control and his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And my go to verse uh, and uh, uh, is Isaiah 41, 13. Uh, the Lord says he will take you by the hand. And just hold your hand like a parent holds a child's hand. He'll walk with you along the way. And he says, do not fear. And there's a lot of fear today, a lot of uncertainty. He says, do not fear. He says, I will help you. So I leave you with that thought that God is in control, period. And in that, we all can say amen and amen. And to always to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And in so doing, you are praying, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, Jesus, come.